This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Screencasts Online, your source for new Mac and iOS tutorials every week. To learn more and for a 14-day free trial, visit screencastsonline.com. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Notables on Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is another of our Mac Notables 10th anniversary shows. Uh, we're trying to make sure we get to everybody on the panel one way or another in some kind of combination. This time, we get to welcome back Ms. Tanya Anks. Tanya, it's great to have you here. Thanks for being here. Hi, Chuck. It's great to be here. Yeah. And Mr. Ted Landau. Ted, it's great to have you back. Uh, thank you. Great to be back and great to see Tanya. <laughs> And it's great to have 10 years of Mac Notables to talk over with you, too. Um, it's it's kind of amazing when I look back on it that suddenly 10 years, it just doesn't seem possible. It's been a long time, and I'm not really sure when Ted first got introduced to the idea of Mac Notables, but I remember it uh, must have been about 10 years ago at a summer Macworld uh, in Boston talking to Chuck quite a lot about this thing called podcasting and whether or not we should get into it and and you know what was going to happen with it and things like that. And I think it's safe to say a decade later that podcasting is definitely a thing that many people have and will continue to get into. Oh, it's going to catch on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> any, any minute now. Any minute now. Yeah, as we, we talked about it a little bit with Adam and um, – Adam and Bob earlier about the, the early history of Mac Notables, but the panel kind of came together just because a lot of you all were not doing anything in the podcasting world. It was up and coming. And of course, at that point, it was audio only, so it made it a little bit different for us. Um, but we decided to put together a panel. I think there were a couple latecomers um, as, as we went along, but really, it's not like we've added anyone over the years. So once, once the in initial panel was solidified, it pretty much locked in, and that, and that was it. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, because I don't remember, were you all doing anything at the time with podcasting or anything audio-related? I was not, no. Um, you approached me, and it sounded like a really good idea. Actually, that's part of what I liked about it. I had very little interest in the mechanics of podcasting. I didn't want to figure out what microphone I needed to get in order to have a podcast-quality podcast and figure out how I was going to you know, put in theme music and commercial breaks and whatever else I was going to, and what, what software I was going to use to... To, to put it all together and all that sort of stuff. And I said, well, here, Chuck's coming along, and he's going to do it all, and all I have to do is show up and talk. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Uh, and so I readily said yes, yeah. Yeah. And, and Tanya, I, I, I can't remember whether you came on kind of voluntarily or whether Adam had to drag you kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. No, I was actually really excited about it. It seemed like a great opportunity to kind of dip my toe in without, as Ted said, having to go to quite the trouble of figuring it all out myself. So it was nice collaboration. And and by collaboration, I mean a nice collaboration with Chuck because Chuck had all the expertise about how to make it all go together and you know whether I should fiddle with my microphone cord or not the answer is no I should not and things like that and of course what's been great about it collaboration wise is a chance to interact with the other Mac Notables folks on occasion when we get together because it's not just an interview with Chuck it's really you know kind of a free free flung conversation with everybody and that's been really great i've really enjoyed that yeah I, you all knew each other i think pretty much by reputation but uh at, le at least and some of you had collaborations or, or professional relationships but in those early days we did a lot more shows you know i'd throw out uh, different times and dates and because no one else had had the same level of commitments i think that they do now like we all do um it was a lot easier to put together panels of you know three, four, five. And of course, with audio, we could do that. Um, but yeah, we got to know each other in, in various combinations. It was always a fun conversation. Sometimes it was serious. Sometimes it was not. 
Um, and over the years, we've all gotten busier, and it's it's now sort of gotten to the point where it's almost individual shows. And I've been having – I had so much fun with Bob and Adam this afternoon. I know with you two now that we got to start doing this again. I know we're never going to get back to doing like two or three uh, a week by any means. <laughs> Who can do that? But um, – you know, it, it might be fun to put the panels together just back on occasion. Yeah, um, that, that's definitely the biggest change that I can think of in terms of how it was in the beginning and how it is now. In the beginning, in fact, the whole idea of it, I think, in the beginning, as you expressed it, was to bring us together. It wasn't, you know, you didn't say, you know, here are eight people that we're, I'm going to have and we'll have one on at a time. It was, you know, you'll have panels of four or five, we'll discuss things back and forth, uh, sort of like your Mac Jury idea does now. Yeah. Um, and it, it gradually, um, devolved from that and, and and in some ways that's okay with me i mean i think it's, it's nice about both but when we were doing the panels there were some panels that i really loved because uh, uh, someone would bring up an idea that i never would have thought to bring up uh, and then we could you know bounce that back and forth and that was great and that's and that's the nice side of panels uh, there are some panel mixes that didn't work as well there are some people who i won't name who it seemed whenever we were together uh there was no chance i might as well have you know gone out for coffee because this person <laughs> This was going to take this person was going to take up all the air for the entire hour, so uh, um, and that didn't work as well. But but overall, it was a good experience. Well, I think two things have happened um, that that might suggest that we could you know revive Mac Notables a little bit. The first thing that's happened is um, when we started Mac Notables, I don't think anybody knew about Doodle. Yes. <clears throat> and Good point. boy, you know, we put together our panel really quickly this week because. Um, People listening don't know this, but Chuck used this online service called Doodle to help us really quickly figure out when we were mutually available to get together for this. I thought it worked like a charm. Mm -hmm. So, but I think when we first started Mac Notables, we were doing the whole you know email thing where one person would say I'm free at six, and then someone else would say, well, six doesn't work for me, but how about five thirty? And you know these things can get very long. So Doodle is a great service. And then the other thing is, I think help me out here, kind of around the time or maybe a little bit after we started um everyone started to get on twitter like our whole crowd did ted you were just a teeny bit late and you wrote a great article about it about it why you came to twitter mm -hmm. and what you thought of it when you finally did it's probably searchable if you search the internet on something like ted lanza bar twitter because you were talking about Twitter was like the, the oh, corner yeah. bar yeah. Um, it's probably findable but i think that for some of us the the interaction that we were enjoying so much on Mac Notables, where you could just you know, hang out with some of your people, you know, um, that Twitter for a while replaced that to some extent. But I think that Twitter has become a lot less useful lately. So we may be ready to, um, you know, come back to a more uh, full-bodied approach than 140 character conversations. Tony, you make a, a really interesting point. It's it's tough to go back and and think about the way things were in those days. And I, I realize I'm making it sound like ancient history, but from a technology standpoint, a lot has happened. The, the rise of social networks, as you say, you know, obviously we now have rise and well, yeah, the, the, the rise and fall and rise well, again. They're, they're not going away, but I don't think that they're uh, they're not the same. It's not the same, and of course, Facebook has come along, and Facebook has its own challenges. And I, I think we've all expressed strong feelings about Facebook on the show. But yeah, it's it, podcasting has has also matured. You know, I, I I love the fact, Tanya, that you thought that I had all the expertise because I was figuring it as I went along, just I think like most podcasters were at the time. Um, but it, it was it was fun because I'd been doing audio programming for the web for a while on the user group report and then morphed it into Mac Notables and Mac Voices. So it's, yeah. It, but, it, oh, and I, I also thank you for bringing up Doodle because I will point back uh, in the show notes to a, an episode of Mac Voices, uh, the Mac Voices briefing I did on Doodle because it'll give you a quick idea of, of, of how easy it is. And it's a free service at, at some level. So go and check it out. Worked very well. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. actually use it all the time for um, PTA meetings. I'm not involved with the PTA this year, but many years I'm quite involved, and they're just it's just super for when you got six people who just really have to get together for half an hour. Yeah. I asked the, the earlier panel of this, 
Do you think that that being Mac Notables in specifically and podcasting in general, um, audio and video, did did it change your relationship with your with your audiences at all? Do you think? Um, I'm, Adam, Adam, I, I will say this. Adam answered it as he never hears any, doesn't necessarily hear from that many people that say, I heard you on show X. Some, but not a lot. But I, I guess just in a broader sense, do, do you feel like people have a more personal relationship with you or in any communications you have with them? I, I think I'm sort of like Adam. Uh, I rarely, uh, on Twitter every once in a while, someone will, will comment that they heard my podcast or you'll send me an email that you got directed at me. Uh, and so I'll get some feedback that way, but it isn't um, it isn't it isn't that often. I think um, you know it's not like it's not like we're an internet celebrity <laughs> or something. Uh, I mean, I can imagine there are people. Uh, uh, yeah, in fact, I know some. I follow a few um, that whose face you would recognize if you saw them on the street now, simply because you see them in video podcasts. Uh, and if you have a large enough audience, then those sort of people can get that sort of feedback a lot. I, I don't. I think we're a little bit more refined <laughs> in our audience, and uh, and I'm, I don't think I'm going to walk around and, and, and have people say, "Oh, there, I, I remember you. I saw you on your podcast," and I, and I don't get it as much in in in, in the like I say, in email or, or Twitter either. But but it happens. Tanya? Yeah. I would say it, it hasn't, you know, fundamentally changed my relationship to, you know, the tidbits or the take control audience. But I, I don't know, every other podcast that I do, I get an email or something where someone says, hey, you know, I saw you and it was cool. And, you know, that's very fun. So you got to figure for everyone who sends an email, there's a bunch of people who don't, but who still you know, enjoyed the show and hopefully they all enjoyed it and nobody hated it. So that's good. Um, once, uh, summer or two ago, Adam and I ran into someone at the Ithaca farmer's market who was just like totally psyched to, to see us knew exactly who we were from, uh, some video podcast. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, it's fun. So Chuck, what we need to do is have some kind of uh, sign up situation so people who watch Mac Notables can uh, sign up to participate. So we could have you know, like two or three of us, and then we could have an uh, audience member uh, just come on the show because that would be fun for them, and, and um, then we could interact. Right with our audience. Uh, Tanya, you're reading ahead in in some of my ideas for the future. But <laughs> I'm yes. doing what I'm doing. So I'm doing what here at Tidbits we call the good idea fairy. <laughs> so we all have lots of things on our to-do list and lots of good ideas that are already on our to-do list. But the good idea fairy, she swoops down from on high and she sprays the world with more good ideas that are good ideas. They're really good. And the only problem is what she, keeps showing I up. Up. <laughs> she keeps showing up. The to-do list of good ideas gets longer and longer. And yet that good idea fairy, she just keeps coming. So sometimes Adam and I are like, go away. No more yeah. good ideas. <laughs> Don't we carry up some of the ones we've already got? So, so we've learned to identify those good ideas. Okay. I, Ted, Ted, say something, Ted. I don't even know what to do with that. Uh, <laughs> you could dress I, I, up as a good idea fairy for Halloween. Uh, let me no, see. No, that. that's a good that's idea. A good idea fairy for what I should say next year. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I, I was just going to say that that the, the, following up on your on your question, I there are people who have t talked to me about seeing me on the podcast or hearing me on the podcast, that it's clear that that's the only interaction they've had with me. So that's kind of nice because it means that, that you're tapping into a different audience. There are people who do listen to podcasts and don't do a lot of reading online. And so while they may have never read any articles I wrote, they know about what I'm talking about uh, on your podcast. And so I, I, that's part of what I like about it. It's, that's so good to hear. You know, I, I, I get asked why... I started doing this, and I get asked then, well, why did you go to video when when audio podcasting seems to be the big thing and videos a little bit less? And, and I, I always thought, first of all, I've, I wanted to talk to you all because I wanted to hear from you. I wanted to hear what you, you all thought. Uh, and and there, there was no other way to do it other than read your articles, and that wasn't interactive. And then when we went to video, I also thought it adds another dimension to it, but I think it's important that people see you know, that – I mean, because we all have these strange senses of humor at times, you know, like <laughs> somebody just brought up the good idea fairy. Um, well, yes. <laughs> you know, and, and actually she was dramatizing it very well. And, and I think there's... I've done that in audio as effectively. Not, nowhere. No, no way. No way. 
So I, I think that there is something to actually seeing people. You feel like you get to know them um, and uh, better than just listening to them. You can actually watch my hairline recede over the years, I think. I do. Oh, a time-lapse video. <laughs> no, no, no. Fortunately, I like, I like to check out everybody else's offices and see what they've got in the background and whatnot. Tanya, it's funny. I just had a comment today on a video. You know, said, why, why don't you clean up your office just a little bit? And it's like, look, this is not a stage and this is not a studio. This is really a working office. So projects come, projects go, but they never go away, you know? So <laughs> it, it's just, it is what it is. And I could, sure, I could set up a black curtain and hide everything, but, you know, that wouldn't be real. And Mac Notables has always, and Mac Voices both have always been real. Mm hmm. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We are genuine technology professionals, and these are our genuine offices. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so over the years, we've talked about you know a lot of things. I, I, I was scrolling back through some of the old, the old write-ups, and I, I mean, we have analyzed trends that have come and gone. Tanya, you brought up Twitter, and I know there were we had a number of discussions when that first came on board about. Does this make any sense? You know, 140 something character communications, and and it very much we all found out it very much did, and then we've all expressed com comments on Facebook and video iPods and the th th every every piece of technology that Apple has brought out. Do you think your thinking about technology has changed over time about what you what the place it has in your life, what you want to use it to accomplish? Ted? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest change that occurred in the 10 years has to revolve around the iPhone. I think the iPhone changed everything. Uh, I remember uh, we were looking for a house here in California back 2003, 2004, and our real estate agent had a BlackBerry, which was relatively new at that point. And I'm looking at, and I had my little Motorola flip phone or something. I mean, what do I need a BlackBerry for? But a little keyboard, and I, yeah, I'm never going to use one of those things, smartphone, smartphone. Uh, and uh, and you know, it took it took Apple to come out with the iPhone for me, and, and even even when I saw it, I mean, I, the, the the keynote that, uh, where Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone is still my favorite keynote of all time, and I've actually watched it more than once, uh, and I was totally blown away. But even even so, I wasn't convinced I was going to buy one right away. Uh, of course, I changed my mind 24 hours after it came out, but, but it didn't take very long. But it's still, even up to that point, I wasn't sure. Uh, but once it came out, uh, I mean, the whole mobile technology uh, it has changed everything. It's, uh, there are a large segment of the population of the world where an iPhone or a tablet is the only computing device that they own. That, that's their total computing experience. And for many of us that have other, other, uh, other computing devices, like the ones we're using right now for this podcast, uh, we still depend on mobile devices for most of what we do over the course of the day, and certainly whenever we're away from, from our homes. Uh, and so I think it, uh, and it's you know replaced as people have talked about. It's replaced dozens of gadgets that you would uh, and other devices that you would normally have had to carry around. That then now the iPhone serves as as a literal you know jack of all trades, Swiss Army knife of the digital world, whatever. And so it's it just it's just changed everything. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Screencasts Online, your source for new Mac and iOS tutorials every week. To learn more and for a 14-day free trial visit ScreencastsOnline.com. One thing we can all agree on, Don McAllister's Screencasts Online is the gold standard for screencast tutorials. Each week, Screencasts Online delivers a brand new Mac tutorial and also a brand new iOS tutorial. That means each week you get to learn something new for your Mac, iOS device, or both. And we're talking about in-depth, step-by-step instruction, not just quick overviews. And if that isn't enough, Screencast Online Monthly Magazine brings interesting and informative articles to you each month via Apple's newsstand. With a back catalog of over 500 video tutorials, Screencasts Online is one of the most complete video resources for learning about Apple-oriented software on the web. You can enjoy a 14-day free trial to find out that Screencasts Online is right for you, then sign up for a quarterly or yearly subscription that includes everything, including Screencasts Online Magazine. Just visit ScreencastsOnline.com to sign up. Screencasts Online, video tutorials you will really watch and enjoy. Thanks to Screencasts Online for their support of Mac Voices. Tanya, 
uh, how about how about your thinking on technology? Because you, you, I mean, you really do live it every single day. Yeah, I, I guess I have, and I think Ted's completely right about mobile. The iPhone, um, certainly for Mac users, was huge, and it just kind of epitomizes or can metaphorically stand in for all kinds of mobile devices from all kinds of different developers, of course. And I think that as a technology writer, you know, personally, it's become increasingly frustrating to cover kind of the the day-to-day. Oh, look, Apple's come out with a new operating system. You know, oh, look, OS 10, 10, 11.1, El Capitan just shipped and so did iOS 9, 9.1. You know, pay attention, everyone. It's like a weather forecast. You know, updates are coming down heavily today. But it, it's not really exciting anymore because it just it happens all the time. You can't get excited every time there's a moderate rainfall. So um, sort of covering that and staying involved in it is, is becoming, I think, less interesting for, for everybody, not even just technology professionals. But I think everyone is just like, oh, you know, look, you know, 17 apps on my iPhone just updated again. <laughs> like, what's in the updates? Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> But I think that um, as a as a you know person running you know a technology website and a series of books and whatnot, what is happening that people uh, I think find interesting and sort of need to be paying attention to, and that it's important that media outlets be writing about is uh, big data. Big data is happening all over the place with all kinds of organizations putting together all kinds of little individual bits of data, and then drawing conclusions and going forth and doing things in the world and whether that means that they're um, just uh, sending us better targeted ads or it means that they're drawing conclusions about uh, health information or they're figuring out uh, where they think a crime might happen next and uh, taking action as police to be in that location so that they can stop the crime from happening next. Um, It's kind of fascinating. And it can be wonderful or very scary. And so I think that's where a lot of attention is going right now. And, and it is well-placed to be there. Ted, do you, do you, what were you saying? Just saying, you know, Tony was saying like minority report. You're going to stop the crime before it happens and arrest the yeah, guy yeah. for the murder that they would, would have done otherwise. So. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's just really, uh, you know, when you get a really powerful computer with a really huge amount of data and you start thinking of different ways to arrange that data and look at it and parse it, you can do some incredibly uh, sort of wonderful but also incredibly terrible things. So it's something just kind of fascinating to keep an eye on. Yeah. I was just reading an article this morning uh, making that point. Uh, it was talking about entanglements in quantum physics, which Every time I read about it, and like it's not something that I read about on a daily basis, but every time I read about it, my, my, my head just goes, yeah, you know, this is why I never became a physicist. Of other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and the, idea, the idea that, that, that two things that could be light years apart can interact with each other, and when you change one of them, it can affect the other instantly. Uh, it's just I, I don't. Know, but that's my point. Of it is not to get into that. My point is that the person who was the, who was, the article is about some new proof that this actually existed, and in the course of the article, one of the one of the people quoted said something along the lines of, "You know, in my lifetime, it's just been so amazing the advances that have been made. What what used to be a, a thought experiment at, at best uh, thirty years ago, they're now actually doing on a routine basis uh, because of the advances in computers and the ability to work with big data." Uh, mm-hmm. so, yeah, it's it's changed it's changed a lot, definitely. I want to go back to Tanya's comment about the the, the number of updates and the number <laughs> of apps because I, there's a, there's a lot of truth to that Tanya. There are times that I admit I I look at my iPhone maybe over, over I don't look at the the app updates for maybe you know two days and you, you're right you have 24 35 updates. I understand right now we're in a heavy update cycle because we're just getting to a ner- new version of the iOS. But in some ways, I can understand from your side how it might be a little bit more daunting and maybe even become a bit overwhelming. But I think it well, also – and it, it's not – it's no longer newsworthy. Well, isn't it? And, and that's why I, I'm not sure I agree with you because – It we, can't we, be. Well, it can't be because unless you live and die by – you know, unless, unless this is your life, right – there's only so much time in the day. So, you know, 
you're just a limited amount of attention that you've got. And something that happens almost every day or certainly every week is just not newsworthy the way something is if it happens once a year. It's, it's just not. But doesn't that make you and your opinions, because you follow it closer than most of us, I mean, I, I, I look to you to, <laughs> to, well, to, to tell me what's important. I mean, that's yeah. a service I try to, to do here. Pick with the ones that we should know about. Yeah. yeah. To, to, you know, you, you're right. You can't, you can't follow every app. But, 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 it's, but it's clear um, where we're going or it's clear where we already are. It's, it's not very uh, much fun, I guess, if you're a developer to you know, actually say, okay, here are 20 features I want to add to my app. I will now add 20 features to my app and beta test it and do all this stuff. And, um, and that will take me six months. And I won't change my app at all for six months. I'll just wait and put out a new version that's got these great 20 new features. Nobody does that anymore. It's like, let's put out one feature every week. Or every week, let's put out a new version. And whatever we've got bug fixed or featured in, that's what goes out that week. Um, oh. The, the other aspect of this that drives me crazy, and it's partially my own fault or our own fault. I mean, I follow a lot of technology websites because uh, mm -hmm. that, that was my business. Uh, but And I can imagine there are people that maybe just pick one or two, and, and, and they maybe don't have this problem. But but some minor thing will happen, well, like Tony is saying, like uh, some app will come out and suddenly now, instead of supporting three primary colors, it now supports some pastel colors as well. <laughs> Uh, and and somebody will will write about it, or or maybe even worse, it'll be it, ha it won't have happened yet, but coming you know. But someone, it might uh, happen. Right, soon. right. A, a rumor. Someone has a, a confirmed rumor. They spoke to somebody and who spoke to somebody, and pastel colors are coming to this app. We're 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 giving you this exclusive, and then well, and some users are up in arms about the pastel colors because they feel that it would have been much better to go with more primary colors. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so well, certain they, people the, with a certain accessibility problem. The reviews are, 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 are a whole other aspect. But what I'm getting at is that it get, becomes an echo chamber. And then my Twitter feed for the next 24 hours is 600 times saying the same thing. You know, this website right. quotes, quotes this website, which quotes that website that said this. But, uh, and then they put out the pastel colors, but they get yellow wrong, just totally wrong. <laughs> so they decide to do yellow in a different way. So it, it's just... It it does it, it. In my personal opinion, a lot of the updates have become just trivial, and and there's there's just only so much time in the day. And, and I sorry, agree. Chuck. No, no, I agree with you. I agree with you, and and it fascinates me that more developers do not take the time, slow down the development cycle a little bit, take the time to do better documentation. And now we have this amazing tool called video, where okay. Where we can actually have you, sh we can actually show you how to use some of these features, mm -hmm. and instead, it's 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 worse than what Apple has done. I mean, Apple doesn't have manuals anymore, and you know, there's some there's some reasonably good there's some reasons for that, but they rely on the independence to the and and. and both independent and established news organizations to almost go through and provide the documentation for this stuff, and and I just I, I it blows me away. I and I and I'm not going to call out any apps, but I can think of a few where I would love to know how to use them better. They know how to use them. Well, you know, that's we what, hope we hope that someone knows how to use them. But it's possible that the emperor just has no clothes. Like the app is just there. And just maybe two or three people know how to use it. But but that in fact like really nobody knows how to use it. It is possible. I typically learn how to use a, an app that I want to get exposed to in depth just by um, searching on Google if I'm having a, a trouble in finding finding articles that talk about. It. The other thing is that you're right. You know that I'll I'll go on to iTunes and and check for updates to my apps, and there'll be like 34 new apps, that, I mean 34 updates to apps that I haven't updated yet, uh, and I don't even bother to find out what's new in those apps. I, mean, I, I could care less at this point. I mean, I, I just I just click the the update all button and move on. You know, and every once in a while, I'll look and I'll see there's an app that I use a lot, and I'll wonder what it is that they changed, and I'll, and I'll click on it to see um, what's new. But but I would say probably ninety percent of the updating that goes on on my iPhone, I don't even know what's changed. Yeah. 
and and I think tidbits, Tanya, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I have the impression that tidbits follows certain apps. Well, we have. And, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, and 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 I think you've picked those for that that you feel are important to note changes on, and and that's great. But every single app developer out there, you know, cuts a, a press release about the updates to their app, and. I don't know if nobody listens to it, or uh, I don't know what kind of re response they get. But it would—I I personally think they would get a much better response if they would just sit down, do a quick little video, which is now easier than ever, to explain what they've changed and how to use this app. Well, and some some do. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but there's definitely more video on the internet than there used to be. I was just—I was just uh, actually checking a fact this morning about. Um, how you search on a keyword in Adobe Lightroom. Um, I don't have Adobe Lightroom, and I just needed to tech review literally two sentences in a book that we actually published or are publishing. Adam's doing it right now. It will be published any moment now. Um, well, and I, was, here. <laughs> I was like, you know, we have to publish this book today. We're crammed into this schedule because Adam and I are traveling and all this stuff. But it would be better if I checked this two-sentence stretch. So I thought maybe there's an article on the internet. I actually got searched on it, got right into Adobe's help, and they actually had, I've never seen this in a company's online help before, not a big company, maybe little companies, they had made a video, which was superb because the video showed the entire screen of Lightroom. So I could not just read about it, but I could literally see it. Um, so, so Jeff Carlson got, you know, Check plus because it was correct, but it was felt really good to be able to check it. So there's some video. I think it's just the pace of change is so huge that there just isn't really time to do the kind of thorough documentation that was happening when the three of us got into computers back, I'm going to guess, in the 80s would cover most of us um, as far as the Mac anyway. Um so there just there just isn't time to do that kind of thorough documentation anymore. And and by the time you could write thorough documentation of some of this stuff, there'd be no point because we'd all be on to the next version. I, I I agree with you on the writing part, and that's where I guess the I, video I, might be better. I, yeah, and and again, I don't think some of this stuff has to be terribly polished. I mean, I, I'm trying to have more developers come on Mac Mac Voices and actually do screen share, so we can let them walk us through their app, show us how to do some things, mm -hmm. because that. That way, I personally think I get a lot out of it because I, I look now and say, oh, that's how you accomplish that. To them, it's blindingly obvious, but to the rest of us, we don't have a clue. I'll, I'll give a shout out to somebody that I thought did something really cool uh, yesterday, I think it was. Uh, I got an email about an update to a program called Over, which is an uh, I, iOS program that can put like text and other things over a photograph. <laughs> and and they the email was that this was like a major update. I think I forget, but probably over a year since they'd done anything on this scale. And they had a whole set of bullet points apologizing. They said, "We're sorry that we had such crappy fonts before, but now you have a great selection. We're sorry that we did this. We're sorry that this didn't work. We're sorry." I mean, oh, this is really kind of cool. You know, they're apologizing for all the things that are wrong were wrong with the old version that they now fixed, and it attracted my attention. And I actually went to look look it out, look, look at it. And of course, the interesting postscript is. I'm thinking, should I get this app? This sounds actually kind of cool. And then I discovered that I actually owned it. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I had downloaded it you know, seven months ago or something like that and hadn't used it since. So, uh, I don't but even now know that it's got better it. fonts, it's not all over for that's, it that's on right. your phone. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, I, you know, I think that's a key point. I mean, I've, I, I, don't, I don't know how many screens of apps I have on my phone. But I know that there are a lot of apps on there that I don't use. I try to I try to use them, or I try to look at them and say, you know, I, I really need to go and and learn that app or play with it, mm -hmm. and I never get to it. Mm -hmm. And you know, there, there's a lesson there too, I think, for folks that if you can teach me how to use your app, the odds that I'm actually going to use it, keep it, and talk about it, advocate it to friends, goes up a whole a whole lot. A whole lot. Somebody should do a study on that. And this had, something like this has happened to me quite often uh, when I was reviewing stuff, where I'd review an app, and it would have this amazing feature that was just be better at whatever it was doing than, um, than the way it was before. Text Expander is actually a little bit like this for me, I'm embarrassed to say, where I, every time I use Text Expander, I said, this is just amazing. I can do this. You know, I can go boom, boom, and a whole paragraph of 
uh, and and I, I do use it for some of those things. But but what happens, and it happens to some extent with Text Expander for me, is that once I'm done reviewing the product and commenting about how wonderful it is, I go back to doing however clunky way I was doing it before because I'm just familiar with it and it's easier than trying to learn something something new. Uh, and lots of times uh, there are, there are, I'm still doing things in ways that when I look at it, I say, why aren't I using that app that, I, you know, that, that does it so much better? But it's just sometimes easier to fall back on your old familiar ways of doing things. That's, that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, for the de app developers on phones, iPads, and, and the Mac now is just making I – mean, you've got apps that do all this cool stuff. You just have to remember that you can do it. Yeah, I mean that was that was sort of my Definitely. that yeah. was my rhetoric about the iPhone for so long. I just have to remember that I have an app that'll do it. Yeah, there's an app for that. I just got to yeah. remember that it's there. Once you start to adopt that, then it becomes part of your life. It becomes part of your workflow, and you you go with it. But you almost have to work at that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and that's you know it's, it's too bad we we've created a new level of work for uh, in search of convenience. And I, and I don't look for new apps anymore. That's another thing. I mean, I, in the beginning, I used to go to the app store and, and search, you know, what are the most popular apps, what are the I, Apple highlighting. I now have, I think, something like over 700 apps that, that I own in some manner or fashion. And, and unless I read about it, in, in, like on tidbits or something like that, unless something I read calls it out and says you should really pay attention to this, or it makes news for some reason, like when Periscope came out and made a, made a lot of news, um, unless it's something like that, I don't. I don't even look anymore. It's just, it's just I, I. I can't imagine that there's something I want to do that I can't do with the apps I have. In fact, as it turns out, there are things I can do that I'm not even aware of. So um, I'm certainly not looking for new stuff, and that can't help developers. You know, that's not what a developer wants to hear. Oh my God, here's here's an audience where where I can come out with this great new app and put it in the app store, and people aren't even going to check to see that it's there. I, I don't know how they deal with that. Yeah. And there's and it's, it fascinates me. There's some companies that everything I, I become a fan of the company because everything they bring out is quality and it's it's useful, as opposed to organizations or or some others who bring out five apps and I just I have no I have no interest because they either don't hold up the, the quality doesn't hold up the consistency doesn't hold up or the usefulness doesn't hold up. So I, I think it's really interesting that they're, they're, that that whole thing has developed, where you become a fan of everything that somebody does, and I will go and if at, at least try out their app, if not buy it, because I know what they've done before, and there's a good chance that they they have tuned in on my wavelength and will give me something that I can actually use. Tonya, Ted, Ted's comments just make me believe, though, once again, that you have more power than ever because you're curating a lot of this information for us. Well, keep in mind, like, I am one of several people in a, in a larger group. So I think we, we each have our, our, our own roles. So, and, and that's part of, I guess, the curating is you're also curating the people who come together to create a product. So on the Tidbits website, we've we have a, a person who works for us named uh, Agen, and Agen writes our Tidbits watch list. And that is just short articles about new software that's come out. And it would do exactly that new version of Text Expander. It adds one or two features. The watch list will tell you about that. And I, I would say we publish five to 15 of these a week. So we're you know, Agon has his list um, of stuff to look for, and if anyone on staff sees something that we think should be in the watch list, we can email him and talk about it, but he kind of covers that. Um, my job is mostly to, you know, edit the take control books, which uh, means, you know, I need to really know how contacts and calendar and iCloud and photos and all those things are working right now, as opposed to six months ago, as opposed to six years ago, because it keeps changing, um, so that I can make sure things are correct across a range of books. And honestly, just keeping my head full of all that stuff is plenty full. And I very rarely have time to just play with a third-party app because there's just only so much time in the day. But I can tell you a great deal about some of the very small nuances of things you don't even want to know about, like groups and contacts. What's up with them this this month? Um, so that that's kind of where I am. But, but as I have the privilege of kind of working for uh, – 
tightly and sometimes loosely intertwingled group of people and everybody can kind of pick up their own specialty. So like we've got Joe Kissel who works with us all the time. You want to talk about a third party backup app? You know, talk to Joe. You want to talk about wacky networking software? Talk to Glenn Fleischman. You want to talk about iPhone games? Talk to, you know, Tidbits Managing Editor Josh Center. So I, you know, have the luxury of a group of people to kind of call on and, and to work within. But, you know, for me personally, you know, I'm a working mom and I love to exercise. So if I've got an extra half an hour, I want to spend it with my kid or I want to spend it with my running shoes on outside. You know, so... That's just where it's at. And yes, Strava is one of the actual third-party apps that I do use. And if I could give just a completely unsolicited endorsement here, the, t- the, the Take Control books are fantastic. If, if well, and Ted you, wrote one or several, yes, really. But not, not for a long time, so I'm not complimenting myself. <laughs> uh, uh, but if you, want, if you want information in book form and you want the latest information available, there's nothing better. The, 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 the way they keep up to date with all the things that are happening – uh, at the rate that things are happening now is just truly impressive. And, uh, yeah, you, that's why I may look I may look like a human being, but I actually am like have all these like frenetic wheels turning inside my head at all times. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. And, and Ted, I'm with you. And of course, that's one reason that I've I've I try to get every single take control author on the show to talk about whatever their latest book is. It's not. It's it's only because I think that they deliver information in a package just what we kind of what we've we been talking about here it's it's a concise package it's a it's a how do i how do i use this to get things done it's not a rewrite or it's not a rewrite of a manual or it's not even a manual it's it's more of a i just i don't i, I take control it's it's to me, to me it's like the world of, the, of technology caught up with take control it was sort of ahead of the curve in that oh, i think the world of technology is sort of you know flattening <laughs> yes yeah. i mean there was, a, there, was a, there was a time when there were big books like the ones i used to write uh, yeah. uh, and you went to barnes and noble to get them and and, and that was the way you got books uh, and that and you could do that because software was being updated at a slow enough pace that it made sense but take control came along and uh, and was the perfect model I think for for a software world where we live in today where things get updated every two weeks uh, and, and it seems like the take control books are updated almost as frequently so we wish <laughs> yeah but we're, we're working our way through <laughs> but you, but Ted you make a you make a really interesting point Um about the way the take control approaches it, they don't try to, to update them every week, or, or Tanya and I would both be very a lot busier than we are. But they they kind of have a good strategic flow of okay, now it's time for you to pay attention to the changes. If if you're a real fan of this program or use it every single day, you've probably figured it out on your own. But for the rest of us, it's like okay, now it's time. There's a, there's a significant update, or you really need to pay attention because something has changed. And and I I value that highly. I'm so well, glad. I find it honestly very frustrating. If we had um, more revenue and more people, I would update the books more often. I think we do you know, a perfectly reasonable job, but I do find it frustrating. I, I, I'm a perfectionist, and when there's a book out there and I know, you know, it's not got every little thing exactly up to date about it, you know, it irks me. So, Ted, I was just going to say it, it can be. Uh, almost anticipate what Tony just said. I know it can be very frustrating. I, I would not want to, for instance, write a book about iTunes right now because the Apple just updates that and reorganizes things in such a substantial way. Every two weeks you can look like, like you can come out with a new book on iTunes and two weeks later it can look like it's three that a day. Well, yes, you could do that. <laughs> <clears throat> but is that what's required in today's world? I, I, I hope at this point that people who, who buy computer books have figured out that, that not every word in the book can be up to date at, at all times because they know that the updates just keep pouring in. Yeah. And, um, Tanya, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't talking as much about the book as I was talking oh. about the software. Oh. Uh, is 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 that what is is? Uh, it, it makes me a little crazy that everybody just acts like okay, this moment in time is where we have to pass judgment on everything. And so, you know, this phone is better than that phone, or this watch is better than that watch, and that's the way it's always going to be. And then a week later, they're eating their words because something else has been released. Yeah, because the watches now have pastel bands. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's a very fluid situation. And that's... 
hard to get used to sometimes. Yeah. I think it's the ease and free, the, of, of up, ease of updating that has changed things. You know, when, there was a time when when an update came out, it was a major chore for the developer just to get copies of the floppy disk, say, or the CD to everybody who had the update. You had to mail this, you had to ship that, you had to, I, you know, let these people know this. And uh, and now, you know, you come out with a new version and it's automatically on your iPhone, say, the next day, uh, whether the person even is aware of it, uh, if they set up for automatic downloads. And so you could come out with an update every 36 hours and it doesn't mean very much anymore. Uh, yeah. And so that's changed. That's what's changed the game a lot. Yeah, I miss these panels, and I think you're right. I think we need to resurrect them because we never, we never knew where they were going. And tonight, when we started this, we didn't know exactly where we'd be, we'd be going. We still don't. Yeah, we still, we still don't. Good. So are we going somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be late. Where are we going? <laughs> See, this the journey is, is the reward. This, this is exactly what I miss. This is exactly what I miss. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make good on the threat. We're going to start throwing some panels back out again and uh, see if we can get some folks involved and, and have a little fun with it and maybe steal one of Tanya's, uh, what was it, Tanya, the, the good idea fairy? Yes, Did the I, good idea okay. fairy. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, do your little animation. Is there, a, is, is, is there a male counterpart to that, or can the fairy be uh, uh, bisexual? Well, I mean, in this day and age, really, the fairy can can go any any gender transgender partial gender that that she or he or you know she he wishes i i would think we, we can be progressive about the good idea fairy right okay so maybe mac notables won't be back i don't know this. <laughs> well now that i've just you know erased half of our listening audience <laughs> but the other half is like yeah cool bring on the good idea fairy right so. uh tanya we need you to, no no never mind skip that that's a that's a terrible idea that's where I was going somewhere. The bad that, idea, fairy. No, I was going somewhere. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, it's great to see you, Tanya. Thanks so much for being here. We we will get together again with uh, with our friends soon. Thanks for having us, Ted. Yeah. What can I say? It's always great. I, I know that you're in retirement, but I keep dragging you back in. Well, it's not. You're not dragging very hard. I I come willingly. I enjoy doing this. Great. Well, I've, I've, I always enjoy having you, having all the, all the panel in whatever configuration we get together. Folks, it's, it's a smooth segue. We always enjoy having you, too, because we have a lot of fun. We hope you have fun listening to us. Look for more Mac Notables 10th Anniversary panels coming up soon. But until then, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.